being here. Be in prayer for our folks that are traveling. Uh, be in, especially in prayer for the service on Sunday. Uh, we want to have a good crowd and, and pray that God would deal with us. Reading in verse 1 of Psalm 28, please. And the word of God says, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Our Lord is our foundation. Our God is our stability. All right? Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me. Lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. I hope you'll notice as you're reading the Psalms that sometimes the psalmist David is praying about his prayer. He wants God to speak to him, but he wants to make sure that God hears him as well. Verse 3, draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands, render unto them their desert, what they deserve. God's a God of justice, and he's going to deal justly. We've studied that recently in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 1. Because they regard not the works of the Lord. Worship. We praise God for his wonderful works. You read Psalm 107. Four times you'll find the verse in Psalm 107 that says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his wonderful works. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. There's a promise. Jesus, the, the word of God says, call unto me and I'll answer thee and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 promises. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. We read in, in, in Psalm, I believe it's Psalm 34, He's put a new song in our heart. God help us to sing and praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. All right? Save thy people, verse 9, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also, and lift them up. Forever. I'll talk to you tonight about being lifted up forever. Our Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your work. And we pray, our Father, that you would be pleased to bless us. We do regard the works of your hands. We don't take these things lightly. Help us to be mindful of them throughout the week. And I pray you to help us. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. An important part of worship is praising God for what he has done for our souls. And the psalmist is praising the Lord. Verse 7, the Lord is my strength, my shield, my heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The same psalmist in Psalm 66, verse number 16, the psalmist David said, Come and hear ye that fear the Lord, and I will declare unto you what he hath done for my soul. 
That's what worship is. It's not just coming and getting all pepped up and all exciting. Excited. Sometimes worship sobers us. Sometimes worship is even somber. Sometimes it's very exhilarating, very exciting. We praise God for his goodness. But the psalmist, his prayer is that God would save his people. And he has saved us by his grace. And he's blessed us. We are his inheritance. You read in the New Testament, the redeemed, the Christian, the born-again child of God is a gift of God to his son. You see. He, we are, so we are his inheritance. Feed them also. God has provided for us in great grace. And then it says, and lift them up forever. I want to talk to you tonight about some ways that God has lifted us up. And in all of them, it's forever. None of them are temporary. Uh, uh, have you ever had somebody, a friend, a loved one, someone let you down? None of y'all have ever been let down. Colt says, nope, never. Extra point in the message tonight, I'm going to deal with lying. But no, uh, I'll say. It, it, it's distressing sometimes. God has not. Look with me in Psalm 40. Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the same psalmist. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. You ought to study in Scripture about the condescension of God, how he lifts us up to communicate with him, how he bows down to communicate with us. He inclined unto me and heard my cry, but look what it says. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and I set my feet upon a rock and established my goings, and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. God has lifted us up from the pit of our own sin. Ephesians 2 I use so often, and you hath he quickened who were dead. In trespasses and sins. We were literally, if you'll study it, we were entombed in our own sin. And in saving grace, God lifts us up out of that. And it, this is forever. He doesn't lift us up and then just let us fall. Yesterday, at the meal after the, the funeral, I... Uh, Caught little Dominic. He and his dad were standing over the way there. And uh, I said to him, I, I bent down to talk to Dominic. I said, you ever give anybody a hug? He said, oh, yeah. He said, I hugged my dad. I didn't want him to hug his dad. I wanted him to give me a hug. So, so Donald said to him, yeah, give Brother Chuck a hug. So he hugged my neck, and I picked him up. I said, now hold on real tight, because I did him the way I do my grandkids. And he's holding on real tight, hugging me real tight, and I kind of let go of him and just started walking around with him there. And what happened? He's terrified that I'm going to let him fall. God's not going to let us fall. He's lifted us up, and it's forever. He's lifted us up out of our sin, and he'll never let us go back. All the way... To the almost to the back of your Bible, to the book of Jude. The last book before the Revelation. God has lifted us up in sanctification. 
We want to look at the very first verse of the book of Jude. How, how can someone like us, and we're the same when it comes to just being flesh and human and sinful, all right? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've missed the mark of God's glory and holiness. How then can we become godly? Everything that we do is tainted by our sin. Our, the Bible says in Isaiah 64, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. We try to be more, uh, we try to reform ourselves or we'll stop this or we'll stop that. It, it, it's just like our son Joel used to start crying when he'd have to get a spanking. And he'd say, oh, daddy, I won't do it anymore. I won't do it anymore. I it didn't make any difference, son. You've already done it. It doesn't matter how much we try to reform ourselves and clean ourselves up and change our ways. Our ways have already departed from God, see. Well, then how can we become godly and saintly? Jude, verse 1, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Now, the doctrine of sanctification in the Bible there's practical sanctification. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. That's where you and I are laboring and working and studying and striving and, and making progress, becoming better, uh, increasing in knowledge, growing in the knowledge of the truth. Practical sanctification. Sanctification we're talking about tonight is positional. The sanctification that God does. The verse says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God. That's forever. The idea here is God pulled us out of our sin and set us, like Ephesians 1, 6, amongst the beloved. He made us accepted in the beloved. And we're seated together, Ephesians 2, verse 7, in heavenly places in Christ. Look with me just to the left a little bit to, to the book of, of 1 Peter. I guess if I say to the left a little bit, that doesn't work if you're using one of these tablets or iPads. All right, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. The word of God said, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. God has lifted us up in regeneration. He, he gave us life. We were dead in sins. He's lifted us up in sanctification to make us holy. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23, and says, The God of peace sanctify you holy. This work will never end. It, it'll never stop for lack of funds. Uh, I live right close. Our, our home is right close to uh, 360 and Interstate 20 and 161, that area. But every time I get on 360 going south, I wonder, why in the world don't they finish this? Why don't they just get, well, somebody ran out of plans. Somebody ran out of money. It, it, it's very frustrating. And the traffic gets, because there's so many people have moved in down there now. It, it, I don't know what happened. They, they, they just, something. They did not finish that. Well, the work of sanctification is never going to run out of funds. Uh, it, it's ongoing. Uh, I had a chart up here one time, a long, long time ago, uh, on a, one of those dry erase marker boards, and I showed you how that, that we're saved and 
all of these things that take place instantly when a person trusts the Lord. Uh, regeneration, uh, uh, reconciliation, redemption, all, justification, all of that takes place immediately, instantly. Something that begins at the same time is sanctification. And all of that is going to come together in glorification. And all of this is done. It's completed, but the work of sanctification is ongoing, and it's never going to, we're never going to run out of road to, to, you know, to where, where it's, it's not been completed. Uh, when I drive to, to Tennessee to see my younger sister, uh, you have to drive all the way to Nashville, then go back down south towards uh, Chattanooga, and then drive down over a big mountain to, to come into Cowan, Tennessee. There's a bypass that the state of Tennessee started that bypasses to the south all of, you don't have to go to Nashville. The craziest, most aggressive drivers I've ever met in my life are in Nashville, Tennessee. But I, I so I, I'm going to take that bypass one time, and I come I'm going through that and they're looking at the map. This is years ago. I thought, this is going to be good. And I'm going down through there, and all of a sudden, it ends. You see this line, highway in, and it, they weren't lying. It ends. Some country western singer owns all of that big farm and ranch down there and would not sell it to the state of Tennessee that state of Tennessee, I found this out, were just very confident that they were going to be able to purchase that and build that interstate highway down through there. But they never did. So that bypass goes to that point going south, and if you're coming from the other direction, it comes to that point, and then you run into that ranch. Unless you're visiting the ranch, that road does you no good. The work of sanctification doesn't end. God is working on us. He's lifting us up. He's making us heavenly. He uh, helps our prayers. How could we possibly sing, pray, preach in such words that would be pleasing and acceptable to God? God works that out by sanctification. God has lifted us up in redemption. He purchased us. Out of, if you study redemption, he's purchased us out of our bondage to sin. And he set us free. And he lifted us. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. The word of God says, what? No, you're not. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. We were enslaved in sin, and God bought us out of that, lifted us up, and set us in his work. And Hebrews 9 verse 12 tells us this is forever. It is eternal redemption. All of these areas in which God has lifted us up, they are forever Look with me in the Gospel of John, chapter number 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. In the Gospel of John, chapter 5, please, verse 24. Down to verse 29. And the Word of God says... Well, let's read verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. 
and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, that's absolute, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and they shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So we see here, God is going to lift us up in resurrection. We may die. He said in John chapter 11, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We may depart this carcass, this body, but we are raised with him. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, please. First Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13 and down to verse 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. That word prevent means we shall not go before them. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The psalmist's prayer was, lift them up forever. This is one of those ways. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, the Lord in the, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The Lord is going to lift us up in resurrection. And then look with me in the book of Romans, chapter number 8. God shall lift us up, just like the psalmist prayed, forever in glorification. We read about heaven, the pearly gates, and the streets of gold, but we also read, the Bible says, flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Uh, we're not going to die and be resurrected and be in heaven and then just be this all over again. Uh, we're going to be glorified. And that is a verse that we read but we really don't know all the details to it because it takes place in heaven. We don't know how tall we'll be. We, we don't know uh, what we'll look like. Uh, so I've heard preachers joking, make jokes about this, and I'm fearful to do it. But, uh, you know, they, they've tried to go out and say, well, everybody will be this or ever. We don't know. But verse 29 and 30 of Romans 8, please. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now, folks that have been saved by the grace of God, they've been predestinated, they've been called, they've been justified, but we are not yet glorified. He is going to lift us up out of this old world, out of this life, and one of these days we'll be glorified. The verse in 1 Corinthians 15 says, This corruption shall put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 51 down to about verse 58. 
And he says, this is a mystery. A mystery is something that God's not revealed yet. We don't know exactly how it's going to be. But it says, we shall all be changed. Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So God has lifted us up forever. What impact should that have on our lives? How should we then live? Look at verse 58 of 1 Corinthians 15. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Therefore, because we're going to be changed, because we're going to be glorified, because we look forward to that day, until then, we are to be steadfast. Unmovable. Now, unmovable does not mean stubborn. That's not biblical justification for being hard-headed. But that means steadfast in God's work, in God's service. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Lord Jesus says in the end of the revelation, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. And so the Lord is coming. We're going to meet him in the air, and we're going to be glorified. And because of those truths, we need to be steadfast in the Lord's work. Psalm 17 and verse number 15. Psalm 17 and verse number 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. God's going to lift us up from this old life. And one of these days we're going to wake up with his likeness. 1 John chapter 3 says we'll see him. We'll know him as he is. It says, for we shall be like him. The psalmist prayed, lift up thy people forever. God has lifted us up. So, Hebrews chapter 4, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. We intend to go to heaven when we die. We ought to spend more time there while we're alive. In prayer, in worship. We ought to be more heavenly than we are. God help us to rise above our surroundings, our circumstances as God lifts us up. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thy word is the truth. Thank you for these dear folks that have come. Please forgive our sin and give us grace. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.